Hey there, fellows. Right, in today's episode, we've got something new and fun in store for you. Now, allow me to explain what exactly made me want to do this. Then we'll figure out where to go from here. Anyways, so I was chilling in my garage, where I found this thing right here. So this is a vice, which you can use as a portable sort of instrument or mount onto a bench. For example, right now we're restoring a motorcycle, and this is what's left of the rim. I did try to clean it with an angle grinder yesterday, but the rust is so bad that it's impossible to remove. Which got me thinking. You see, we could really use a sandblaster around here. I'm sure you all know what that is, and how it works. Suffice to say that it's an invaluable tool in our trade, if you need to give something a thorough clean. It's actually a pretty simple device. The only difficult thing was finding an empty gas cylinder. Well, we did find one, so it wasn't too expensive. As for the rest of the parts you need to make all of this work, they're also not particularly expensive. Seriously, the priciest bits were... Well, again, this here cylinder. And right here I've got a bunch of... I've put together an assortment of useful supplies. These are mostly valves, T-pieces, and some foam tape. I am seriously keen on putting together a sandblaster. I don't know why I haven't gotten around to doing it. I mean, it's a very useful thing in anybody's garage. If you need to clean something off, it'll do you right. It'll make really quick work of removing any sort of rust and whatever. Right, I see we put together a sandblaster. I've actually never used one myself. Anyway, we'll see how it works, what it's worth, and whether it is indeed useful or not so much. Let's do this. All right, fellas, the hardest thing we had to do was removing the valve. From the looks of things, it's been chilling here for a number of years. It was so clingy that we were barely able to extract it, but, you know, these things happen. What matters is, it's out. Now, as you might imagine, hacking or welding this cylinder as it sits isn't an option, since it does still contain some residual gas, though it might seem as if it were empty. When, as a matter of fact, that's not quite the case. And believe me when I say that that residual gas is more than enough to make this a really bad day. So in order to cut it to pieces, we'll need to fill it with water first. I've done this stuff a number of times, there's really nothing to it. We just need to fill it to the brim with water. That's going to allow us to carefully start hacking away. Okay, let's get to it. Making a DIY sandblaster. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Right, now we have a filler neck to pour the sand into. Now there is the matter of drilling a hole in the side, which will... We'll use it to feed air into the cylinder and get some high pressure going. But you see, we need to create a bit of pressure in there to attain equilibrium, to loosen the sand up. We're gonna need to make another hole down there, weld on a fitting through which the sand will exit the cylinder. It's basically going to make it into... It'll be fed into the hose, at which point you just point and spray. But we still have to get to that part. For now, we just cut and drill. All right, yeah, we can just cut right around this weld. Awesome, we don't even really need to try that hard here. We just need to cut around the line. There, fits beautifully. And then we just weld all the way around. Okay, we've chopped off a piece. It's nice and smooth, doesn't seem to be any wobble. We can go ahead and weld it on. All right, we've welded on the filler neck. That's good. Or maybe I should call it a loading neck. Anyway, now we just need to... Yeah, right about here we'll drill a hole, which is where we'll be welding a fitting. We'll attach a valve, through which we'll feed the cylinder with air and increase the internal pressure. Plus one for the sandblaster gun itself. In any case, we'll get a better understanding the further we keep going. We'll start with some drilling, immediately followed with some welding. I mean, why wait? Okay, so here I have the fitting, which is a half inch. 
As for the pipe, if I remember correctly, it had an external diameter of about 21 mil, I think. That should make for an internal diameter of 16, meaning we'll be making ourselves a 16 millimeter hole. Oh, right, it's full of water. Oh well, it's not going to be that terrible of a flood. Oi, oi. Okay, what have we got here? We have what used to be a gas cylinder with a big bore neck up here. Over here on the side we have a half inch fitting. Plus we've welded on another fitting down here, which is also a half inch in diameter. Check it out, fellas. We've given it a paint job. The paint is nice and dry. It does look pretty different. We decided to color it black. And now all of the fittings we've welded on, except for this big one, need to be connected. For that we're going to be using this here hose. This one is 20 mil. I've also got... So right here... Wait, where are they? Oh, here they are. Right here I've got a set of filler nozzles, which are also 20 mil in diameter. We'll use a bit of foam tape to get a tight seal, and now we need to get everything hooked up. Right, let's do this. Check this out, fellas. We've put everything together, it's all looking good. As for how this thing works, it's all very simple. You feed the compressed air through here, under pressure, yeah. And right here, when I visited the store I couldn't find a quick-release fitting with half-inch thread. Maybe they just temporarily didn't have them in stock when I was there. So we've connected everything via hose, and hopefully it keeps it together. I'm guessing it should, I mean, we often connect hoses in this precise way, and things usually seem to work out okay. Anyway, so we open up the valve, compressed air enters the cylinder, and right here we have a second hose. We open up this valve, and at this point we already have pressure inside the cylinder. We have pressure in this hose, we get up to this T-piece, and it's all fed straight into this hose right here. The pressure here is exactly the same as it is inside the cylinder. Okay, so we figured that out. On this end we'll have a jet, which is going to be closed off, the entire system will be under pressure. Meanwhile this valve, which is located way down here, it's going to be adjusting... You open and close it to control sand flow. Or instead of sand, you can use this stuff which I bought. It's called copper slag. And I'm really keen on trying it out. You see... The parts we need to sandblast, if we were to spray them with sand, that'd be just... It's just gonna take a really long time to clean them off. Copper slag grains are somewhat bigger, plus it differs from sand in that regular beach sand granules are round, while these actually have sharp edges. When this stuff comes into contact with metal, it's way more effective in cleaning off rust, dirt and everything else. Now the interesting part, time for us to put the jet together. 
сопло. Сопло из It's actually made using an automotive grade spark plug. You have to hack the metal bits off the plug, leaving just the ceramic part. Then we take a disc for grinding ceramic granite and carefully start hacking. You need to cut right before the wide part of the ceramic piece. Why so? That's so we can fit this plug to the valve. That's when I take a simple half-inch plug. I've got one of those right here, so I'm going to be drilling right through it. Right, what's the diameter? 12 mil. Fantastic. I guess I'll use a 12.5 millimeter drill bit, maybe even 13 mil. Doesn't matter, I mean, it's not like this piece is going anywhere. We'll install a seal right here. I reckon one from an oxygen hose should do okay. We'll chop off a piece of hose, insert the plug. Well, I mean the ceramic bit that we have left from the spark plug. Then we'll take this plug, which will act as a sort of hold-down nut, and use it to, well, hold everything down. We have yet to sort all of this out. Okay, let's quickly finish the job. And I am just itching to start testing this thing. Okay, fellas, check this out. I've drilled through, assembled everything. You saw me slip that bit of hose in, but as I'm sure you can see, after putting it all together and tightening the nut, the ceramic bit is slightly off-center. Just a tiny bit. That's nothing critical. I really don't think it'll make that big of a difference. I reckon it's still going to work. So for starters, we'll have to... Try it out while the reservoir is empty. Since... So the thing is that our air compressors can get the pressure up to about 10 atmospheres. And though these hoses are reinforced, I have my doubts about this. Well, it's not that I have doubts. I'd just like to check and make sure that they'll hold up okay. I mean, it'd be pretty unpleasant to see it all go kablamo when there's a good 5 to 7 kilos of sand packed into the machine. We wouldn't want that to fly in every direction, right? So for now, we'll do an empty test. So assuming this works, we'll head outside and do some sandblasting. Right, now we check to see if these hoses and everything else will stay in one piece. It's blowing pretty hard. <laughs> and that stream is going to contain either slag or sand. This should be pretty good. Okay, so I've brought everything outside. Now, I'm aware of the fact that you should take to the safety measures very seriously. I've got my jacket, I've got my hat, and that's as serious apparel as I've got. I'm afraid this isn't going to help, but oh well. These gloves... I don't think they'll help you either. You'd be better off with a pair of welding gloves. And here's that vice that I wanted to clean off. There we go. I'll at least try to secure it to the table. Awesome. Right, let's give this a try. Opening the valve. Something's coming out. Oh, wow, I just made a hole in the table. Holy crap! Okay, now check this out. Check out the speed at which it's flying out. Doesn't it look great now? We've cleaned it off, it's looking good, it's ready for some clear code. Alright, so now we need to try 
cleaning this rim. I'll go ahead and place it right here. Well, what can I say here, fellas? I actually wasn't expecting this sort of effect. This is one very useful device indeed. Now, how long would I be doing this with a wire brush on an angle grinder? Or on a drill, doesn't matter. Whatever the case, it would have never scraped off this old and deeply rooted rust. It would have easily cleaned off the soft and thick upper layer. But as for the indentations and all that other stuff, it wouldn't have even gotten in there. But in our case, this thing is unbelievably effective. So while I was at it, I tried cleaning off the paint, and it comes off just fine. Oh man, the vice looks like it's brand new. There is one thing I need to do, it just became clear to me. It's actually pretty cold outside. We're expecting to see some rain, and the air compressor apparently isn't fitted with a water separator. And that's not good. The air has to be treated, as in it shouldn't be humid. And with these long hoses, we can't tell for sure whether there's any condensation forming. A bit of water does find its way in, which I'm sure you've noticed on the footage. In any case, the copper slag is being fed, so there's that. We're all good with the air. We did see the nozzle coughing somewhat, but whatever. What matters is that it all works pretty well. So yeah, I'd say that this is a pretty useful device. That said, safety should always be a big concern. I mean, these gloves, if you were to spray your hand by accident, they're not gonna help you. You need something much more robust, like from deer skin or something. Maybe even from some kind of soft material, so that when the sand comes into contact with the fabric, it doesn't punch right through. You saw how quickly it made that hole? Yeah, this is a nice piece of kit. Honestly, why didn't I make one sooner? It makes it just so much easier to clean off your dirty old parts. You don't even need any wire brushes. Just load the sand connect the air compressor, go outside, and give everything a quick clean. And then there's the fact that you can reach spots that you physically won't be able to clean out using a brush. I mean, the particulates fly out with tremendous speed, scrubbing everything off upon contact. Awesome! Anyway, fellas, that's all I have for you. But if you decide to go this route, make sure to be careful. Then I assure you, you'll see a 107% success rate. Right, let's wrap this up. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.